They say a lady never tells, but I've certainly got some tales for you, dear audience. Let me begin by taking it back to my days as a wee child, visiting the Renaissance Pleasure Fair. Now, I grew up in southwestern Pennsylvania, <clears throat> where ye old fair is quite small. By the time I was in high school and being a theater kid myself, I knew half the staff, let alone the regular guests. The fair welcomes all, from small children learning to use their first sword to fraternity brethren chasing ample bosoms. If you have never been to a fair, let me paint a picture for you. You will weave through vendors selling wares of all types, from jewels and corsets to blades and drinking horns. Likely you'll stop for a drink or two or 12 along the way and maybe even have the exhilarating experience of having it poured down your throat by a bar wench while she encourages you with dirty chatter. <laughs> you may even stop to watch a performance of the strongest woman on earth, a man cracking fire whips or washer women telling naughty jokes. You may end your day by taking in the joust and cheering your night to victory with a hearty round of huzzas. So I think my love of immersing myself in the fair can probably be traced back to my first visit to a medieval times around the age of seven. See, medieval times is essentially a giant banquet where guests eat with their hands, down goblets of ale, and watch a joust being fought for the king's favor. We were seated in the Green Knight section and happened to be nearly front row. Before blood is shed, each knight attempts to win over their audience with their charm. Ours had a rose in hand to pass to one lucky lady. That lucky lady happened to be tiny, dorky, utterly obsessed with boys twice her age, me. <laughs> I was smitten and to this day refuse to support any other color and always seat myself squarely in the green section at a joust. <laughs> the summer before I turned 15, I was about to embark on my greatest adventure yet, dating. By the time I hit puberty, and who are we kidding well before that, I was totally boy crazy. And I was a romantic. While other girls my age were falling for Leonardo DiCaprio as Jack and Titanic, my movie crushes were people like Viggo Mortensen as Aragorn in Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean, and Tim Curry <laughs> as Long John Silver in Muppet Treasure Island. Yeah. I mean, how that man makes one leg so sexy, I'll never understand. So. It only made sense that the fair provided precisely the romantic environment and cast of characters that I was looking for. At the time, I was being courted by a fellow Renaissance nerd who happened to work on the Queen's Court. He took me on a romantic jaunt around the fair that ended on a hay bale outside of the joust with, you guessed it, my first kiss. <laughs> I felt that I was kind of a late bloomer, <laughs> and I had been waiting very impatiently for this moment. Years of anticipation and practice on the back of my own hand finally paid off. <laughs> of course, the anticipation made for a slightly underwhelming reality. <sighs> my scratchy seat and the smell of other strangers' body odor only added to the unnecessary amount of tongue being thrust into my mouth. <laughs> but still. I had finally kissed a man. I was blossoming into a woman. <laughs> I believe we both said something along the lines of dreaming of this moment. <laughs> yeah, perhaps for him he meant kissing me, but I mean, I was just living in my own little romantic fantasy world. The romance didn't last long. And although he tried to keep the magic alive in the real world, it just wasn't the same. See, life pauses at the fair. You escape reality to a place where anything is possible. In full costume, I could be whoever I wanted. From canoodling with Jack Sparrow in a cage, <laughs> to meeting Gandalf, and even Shrek. <laughs> I've had many of the interesting experience, none of which I regret, except perhaps 
falling for a pirate. You see, a lady should never fall in love with a pirate because all they seek is conquest and booty. <laughs> but I was 3,000 miles away from home in the foreign land of Southern California at a fair filled with actors, drunkards, and purveyors of Dungeons and Dragons alike. <laughs> My friends had introduced me to this man at a party who they thought I would get along with. I didn't get to know him very well right away, but we all agreed to go to the fair together soon enough. The day came, I donned my garb, and we were off. We were all having a great time together, and while I played matchmaker for him and another friend, he secretly had his eye, no, not the one under the patch, on me. Although we had met briefly before, escaping into the world of the fair with someone can be an intimate experience. You share laughs, drinks, huzzas, and flirtation commences. The mead caught up to me that day, and upon returning to the present world, he made his intentions known. Now, my type usually involves some version of long hair and a beard, and even though I vowed not to date other actors, I do love a man who isn't afraid to dress up. <laughs> and dress he did. It would take both hands for me to count how many times I've seen him in that costume, at least over half of which were outside of the fair and only once or twice by my own request. <laughs> Even when he was out of costume, he still regularly wore a rather interesting leather thing that I can only really describe as a squashed top hat. <sighs> yes, I tend to have a thing for interesting people. Friends of mine to this very day still refer to him as the pirate. <laughs> okay, I had a thing for pirates. I mean, hell, I've even taken longsword training as an adult just to be ready when the opportunity presents itself. And you can still get a rousing sea shanty out of me if you catch me at the right time. And I thought I had finally found my own Jack Sparrow, just like little me had dreamed of. What I have not yet told you about aforementioned love affair was that I was still in a long-distance relationship with a man in Pennsylvania at the time. <sighs> a man almost as dangerous as a pirate, a musician. <laughs> and while he was a good partner, as often happens at sea with pirates, I was led astray. Listen, I do not regret ending my relationship from home. I was young, flighty, impressionable, and I'll be honest, I found myself bored over time. I needed action and adventure and swashbuckling and the like. <laughs> Something a pirate would certainly bring to my life. Or so I thought. <laughs> Seems that beyond the walls of the Renaissance pleasure fair far less pleasures to be found. As it turns out, someone that bombastic was an excellent addition to a day at the fair, but a little more uncomfortable on a date. Action and adventure had turned to embarrassment and excuses. I was starting to question if I was even enjoying the relationship, but this little fantasy that I had cooked up kept me on a very one-track mind. And as we all know, pirates are masters of deception. I'd like to say that I stepped away from this romance and held my head high, but instead it was the pirate that grew bored of me and karma from my breakup with the musician was returned to me with a vengeance. I do occasionally wonder what, if anything, would have been different if my matchmaking that day had succeeded and the pirate had ended up with my friend instead of me. Considering that she's now married to a woman, I don't think that would have made much difference either. <clears throat> but fear not. Heartbreak did not stop me from returning. You'll be glad to hear, dear audience, that while I have continued to kiss many a lad at the fair, no more romances have begun there. I've learned that it can be a great date and can bring people closer together, but partners should be discovered outside in the present world, where you'll be forced to live most of your lives together, quirks and all. And I leave you with this advice. The Renaissance was a time of beauty, discovery, and adventure. But there is a reason the past is meant to stay in the past.
Give it up one more time for Tessa Markle. Tessa is an actor, filmmaker, podcaster, and most importantly, a cat mom who can be found on social media at Miss Tessa Lauren.